I first came to RIT, we had no transistors. There weren't any. I think I remember when RIT got its first transistor. Now we have cell phones with billions and billions of transistors in them, and things have changed just incredibly. The integrated circuit was created in the 1960s, and by 1970, there was rapid growth with the creation of the microprocessor. And by 1980, it was a full-blown, multi-hundred billion dollar industry. And the universities had fallen behind in creating the engineers that industry needed. I started at RIT as an electrical engineering student before there was a microelectronic engineering program. Dr. Fuller put together some equipment for making integrated circuits. And he said that a friend of mine and I could come in and do whatever we wanted as long as we wrote it down. We made the first solar cells at RIT, the first photo masks, the first uh, transistors and resistors, and it was really, really exciting. And later, the notes that we had done for that course were what laid the groundwork for the microelectronic engineering program. The industry needed uh, these engineers and they came to RIT um, because RIT had imaging science, but they wanted an engineer that understood the electrical engineering aspects of um, microelectronic engineering as well. And no such program existed. We had to create an entirely new program with more than a dozen courses. And we also had to create a laboratory that was huge. We had to build a new building, raise money, put in $50 million worth of equipment. Lynn was the person that was at the right place at the right time. But more than that, he was the right person at the right place in the right time. As a faculty member that was also an alum, I think he knew a lot of people here. So when an opportunity came to start a unique program, he could sit down and talk to the various players that needed to come to the table to put this all together. I think innovation can both be inspirational and very methodical. In the case of uh, semiconductors and microelectronic engineering, it's more of the methodical side. We have to put together a billion things at the size of an atom, and they all have to be right. If there's one mistake, the circuit doesn't work. In our laboratories, we actually make semiconductors with thousands of transistors. Our processes are very similar to what they do in industry. The integrated circuits that we make are pretty sophisticated and pretty amazing to make at a university. I think one of the most innovative things that Lynn brought to the program was just the concept that you can teach very high level material and concepts to undergraduate students. We have a class and it's uh, a lot of hands-on interpersonal work. Dispersed throughout the clean room are all these teams working on different pieces of equipment and he then moves between the groups dispensing <laughs> wisdom and information on whether they're doing things right or wrong. And that's not a normal way to teach a class. And these are the kind of things that when these students get out and go to work in industry, it's that experience that makes all the difference. <laughs> the other day in class, I was talking to my students about how long I've been there. I like to tell them that I came to RIT before RIT was here. Uh, there were no buildings here when I came to RIT. It was just a swamp out here. And then one of the students pops up her hand and says, my dad was your student. And there's, and that's interesting. Lynn's career at RIT has spanned a, a tremendous length of time. And so Lynn's perspective is, is invaluable. He can remind the students of where we've been and where we're going. Our program was unique. And I've seen other schools copy our program or at least try to do something similar to what we do and that's also very gratifying. And today I think we made a real impact in changing the way education is done uh, for engineers that end up working in the semiconductor industry and I believe that it's helped uh, the industry, uh, not just RIT.